Assalamu alaikum, good afternoon listeners, it's me Suleiman Ben Suare, coming back on Facebook Live. Today is Saturday the 28th of May 2022, the time is just gone 30, 34 minutes past 5 in the afternoon in Birmingham, England. Yeah, it's just, um, I just want to come on a brief, brief program. Uh, let me just share this, we share this video and uh, we commence the cover program. Yes, it's, uh, um, today is Saturday, the 28th of May, 2022. Time's gone 35 minutes past five in the afternoon in Birmingham, England. Um, just coming for a brief to put this spotlight on the gum petroleum trial. Um, the reason being is we've been advocating about this case and um, the case have finally come to the courts. Unfortunately, unfortunately, just as the usual, the case did not come to the courts properly. Um, we have seen evidence of selective justice, which have weakened this case. And this case is likely, very likely, if we have fair trials, going to be thrown out. Very likely. I've given, I've given the case space to hear there are witnesses. So far, about four witnesses. I can tell you there's nothing from those witnesses indicating any evidence according to the charge, charge uh, brought forth against these two. They have not produced any evidence. Not, nothing credible. And if they get to the fort and they have about seven witnesses, and um, it seems even the witnesses are getting weaker as they go, I don't see how this court can find these people guilty for the crime they are charged. Again, I am not saying that the, uh, they, they have not taken part in committing the crime. I'm not saying that. But we have to remember something. Since this government came to power, any case they take into court, especially regarding to corruption, will fail because of the selective justice. Um, the same case issue happened with the case of Solo Sending. And I said that from the beginning, that case, case cannot proceed the way it's been uh, formulated and, and, and find those people uh, uh, responsible for the crimes that are committed. Because the case was a case of selective justice. The case was not followed through. The case was not built according to the way it should have been built. Uh, people have been insulated out of the case. And some people are selected who might have taken part, but that is not enough. If you bring a case like that, it's likely to falter. And we have seen for five years, and they have spent five million dollars on a private prosecution, and still they cannot get the case concluded. And that's the weakness of the profit prosecution. We have seen the case of the fish fish. again. That was deliberate. The minister himself was supposed to be part of it, and a lot of other people. It was not the palm sake alone. If the case was investigated properly, but they just went and picked a portion of the investigation from the journalists. 
You have not even consulted the journalists to get the entire uh, spec, spec, uh, the spectrum of the case. Or they have not gone and do their due diligence to bring the case. What happened to that case? There's no interest. The same as the passport scandal. Because all the time they are trying to insulate people out of it. We remember this case. It's a major case. It's not only two people taking money from a safe. If the allegations are a transaction. A huge amount of money, huge bulk of, of merchandise, which is the petrol, multiple uh, people in the conspiracy, and none of those people are charged. But two people are charged and brought to the, the, thing, the, the, the managing director and the, 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 uh, the controller of the stock, operational director. And interestingly, some of the issues they're bringing forward, in fact, what predated the presence of the, uh, the, the, the uh, it, it happens before this gentleman become a Madini director. Are they deliberately, is the government deliberately bringing the case just to find a closure, so, so to tell, to, to prove to Gambians that they have brought the case to justice and, and it fails and that's it, we bury, bury it. It seems as in fact the government is in conspiracy to bring a case, a weak case, so that they can just bury the case and forget about it. That's, 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 that's from my observation, and I'm going to go through, put in the spotlight, and, uh, and people can take interest. I want people to take interest in this case to see how much of corrupt, systemic corruption we have in the country. The failure of that accountability. Now, the managing director is in charge of running the, 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 the institution. The operational director, obviously, very instrumental. But where is the director of finance? Where is the director of finance? Now, apart from the director of finance, these two people are not going down on the floor to lift oil and take oil and sell it outside the country. The oil was lifted, facilitated to be lifted from the storage facility, and there must be buyers. And the, the people that bought the petrol are, are in that country and they are part of what they are called the uh, oil marketing companies. Why are all these people not brought to justice? Why are all these people not brought, charged and brought to justice? How did they acquire the oil? How did they acquire the oil? If someone bought an item that is found to be stolen, that person is charged for receiving stolen goods. But this is even far more, this is a regulated industry where oil marketing companies should know the, the procedure to buy and sell. And they should abide by the, the, that structure being put in there, by the protocols or procedures put in there to buy and sell. And to pay, uh, if they take credit, and uh, I mean, there should be a procedure how to pay, pay this credit. But you will find out. The interesting part of this is the reason why those people would not be held accountable. Those are the people that, that are complicit. And they are part of cabals, not only one cabal, cabals actually. And different, different cabals, or we call them cabudus in our, uh, uh, these things, are, are of criminals within, within our, our, uh, our administration or in that country. And these are, these, these are the ones complicit. And this cabal are the same people entrenching any bad government that come into our country. From Yaya Jame to Adamaba. These are the same people, principal in, in using the business sector and monopoly, monopolize the business sector, corrupt the business sector, and kill off any aspiring businessman or any genuine, genuine businessman because you will never able to compete them and, and because they, they have a free hand in monopolizing the situation. I mean, they, 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 they disregard um, any regulations or laws in the country and get away with it. And as we go through the, the testimonies, we can see, hear their names. Remember, I did call out this before. You hear their names. And principal would be who? Ababaka Jawara. Ababaka Jawa, who just now happened to be a multi-billionaire from this administration. The guy was poor as a church mouse. 2017, he lobbied to be a counselor in, 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 in China. 
and he got that consulship in China. But the minute he realized that actually it's not lucrative to stay in the country, he ran and stayed in the country and he was given a mining company. And from there on, he started to build himself. Now he is into anything in that country, from the fertilizer, from the oil, oil sales, anything in that country he is. Now he's even a building contractor. Now he's, a, he's becoming a media mogul. He's becoming a media mogul. And you see that why all of them have interest in becoming media moguls. Just as we have seen Mohammed uh, Matafan from one entity to another. Now, I mean, that's, this is the game they're playing. They want a total control of the country. That's why it's interesting, important to put interest in this case. And in the proceedings, we will realize, again, the complicity of Barrow and the wife and the NPP. The NPP through Musa Drame because of his financial uh, treasurer and, and, and how this NPP is sponsored by this cabal. All these people involved in this trade are supporters of the NPP and they have been given money on, to the NPP like the Basa, the Jawaras and others. None of them are charged and they should have been charged and brought to justice. Now, as I said, I'm not vowing for the people charge. I am saying that if they are charged then the church should be the, the, the scope should be widened and everybody who play a part should be charged in order for justice to be served. In order for us Gambians to to to, to, to um, I mean to have um, um interest to be protected. But if we find out that this selective justice will just end up killing this case because it sounds as there's no case here to be answered by these two. If even there's a case to answer because of the way the prosecution is weak, because of what they're avoiding to do. To prove the case, I mean, there's going to be a problem. If you accuse something, somebody of, of stealing a mobile phone, you have to prove it. Yes, I know they have put seven charges, conspiracy and everything else to make it easier to get them in the net. But still now, that act of conspiracy has to be proven. And the people they expect to prove a conspiracy are not proven the conspiracy so far. Because even if they know more, they themselves, they're insulating themselves. They are within the system. They are within the system. Now, the other people that should be able to prove conspiracy to are complicit in it, and, and they, should be, they, they should be reprimanded. That's why everybody should have been charged. Now, let's go to the press, um, um, the, 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 what the press have covered. And we just read it verbatim from there and, and, and see what has been presented. I start with um, um, the first uh, prosecution witness. The first prosecution witness, which is uh, Amadou Duketa, Senior Gambia Petrol Petroleum Finance Manager, on Monday yesterday uh, commenced his testimony in the Gambia Petroleum Saga at the High Court. And um, it says uh, Sehu Drame is uh, accused one former managing director, and Lamin Gassama accused two, former operational manager at the Gambia Petroleum, uh, uh, Petroleum are charged with eight counts, three counts of economic crime, five counts, uh, counts, counts in the alleged of uh, corruption saga. The eight counts are labeled against the two in their maiden court appearance at the High Court in Banjun on the 4th April 2022, presided by Justice Hadi Roach. Their appearance in court followed uh, their arrest on their alleged involvement in the alleged corruption, malpractice, and the missing of $20 million at the depot. Lawyer, lawyer M.D. Mbalu, uh, representing the state, lawyer, uh, whilst lawyer uh, Christopher E. Meni, B.S. Conte, um, S. Akimbo, uh, Bukrin Polin, and Sassum Silla represent the first accused and second accused person in the hearing. Yesterday hearing, lawyer for the state, M.D. Mbalu, submitted seven, seven prosecution witnesses' statement to the court. The first prosecution witness to testify was Mr. Amadou Keta, financial manager at the Gambia Petroleum Facility Depot in Lamin, uh, uh, Lamin Mandinori. Given his testimony, before the court, Mr. Keta said he has uh, been working at the Gambia Petroleum for four and a half years now, and that he know both the first and second accused person in their capacity at Gambia Petroleum. His testimony bordered on what he knew about the operation of Gambia Petroleum. 
its lo uh, lo uh, local and international partners and about the shortage of sto um, stock which led to the alleged missing of 20 million at the depot. When, when asked whether he knew uh, any, uh, 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 anything about the international traders working with Gump Petroleum, PW once, once said, despite working at the depot for four and a half years, he only came to know about the in international traders when uh, he was appointed as acting general manager at the Petroleum. This is the first instance uh, we should be alarmed. The head of finance saying that while he was still the head of finance, he did not know the international traders linked to the company. I am not a financial expert. I'm not an accountant. But how, what does he, what does he look at? What does he look at at the depot? A depot is a bonded warehouse where they get supplies to come in. And those supplies are, 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 are they, they obviously the safety and order operations that I mean safe keep there and and they, they are discharged to the lawful owners or, or, or people authorized to take petroleum from there. What else should the money uh, the, the financial manager not know? The, the source of any revenue from that this thing should have been known to the financial the manager or director. And because that's what he is in charge of actually to know the revenue uh, stream uh, where it comes from people that they would deal with and if the people that that are the client of the business the international traders are the client of gun petroleum who brought their stock and to, to, to give it to the gun petroleum to service them to service the stock to keep this stock this thing this is a major uh, I, I'm, I, I don't know how how he can get away with that position. He only knew when he acted. That's when the scandal happened and he acted at the position. Now it's for Gambians to think about this. And obviously we see, we'll uh, follow to see if the defense um, prosecution, uh, uh, defense councils have, 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 have raised this point, uh, uh, this point here. He continued, um, he continued to say, he said that um, his lack of knowledge about the international traders uh, during the four and a half years as senior financial manager was because one and two accused persons never informed him about the international, international traders. Guys, this is so much in interesting. I knew, I knew I have never worked uh, with, with these companies. But I knew, how can he not know? The, 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 the gun petroleum, buy gun petroleum would not function without the international traders bringing petrol for them to stop. Gun petroleum business is to receive, receive stock from international companies. They take care of that stock and make sure that stock is delivered into the, the uh, to marketers. Now, how can a senior financial manager work for four and a half years and turn around to say, because he was not told by the operational director, because he was not told by the managing director. What, what, I mean, what was he doing in, in that company? What was his work in this company as a senior? This is, this, he must have known where the stuff come from. Gambia, even if Gambia was producing petrol, he should know where the petrol, uh, how much of petrol come in. Do, do, I mean, I cannot, is it me or what? What what does he what does he enter? That this stock came from, came from what? Because this is what he's the resources he is managing. He doesn't know where they come from. Now look, I have to leave it up there and Gambians to think about this and just see how ridiculous the the, the prosecution case is here. Uh, he said um, the day I was appointed. Uh, he said, the day I was appointed as the acting general manager, I received an email from one Abdurrahman Barrow. When I opened the email, I found a type which include storage agreement with various um, uh, amends. There, they, they, uh, there, there was also a protest letter from Trafagoria and claim uh, and a claim letter with, with envoys from Trafagoria. I printed them out and got them signed Mr. Keta said. Now, this is very interesting. Now he's saying that he did not know anything about this thing until there was a crisis. 
Now he was appointed to oversee the company. Now again, that's a problem there. You have a major internal problem, and you 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 you, you, rescue, you, you relieve the managing director, relieve the operation of uh, operational director, but you left the head of finance, who is of technically of the same level and responsibility with, with the operational director. And that person is saying that whilst he was there, he didn't know of, of, of the operation, I mean, the operations of that facility. And he was there to take account of uh, accountability of the operations of the facility for four, four and a half years. He did not resign when he found out that he doesn't know these things. But he only knew when there was a letter, an email that came to tell him, oh, these are your partners. And Trafagoria is one of the international uh, traders. Uh, I mean, Bob sent him a protest letter. We move on. May, May 9th, May 9th, 2022, Mr. Keter said he downloaded all the files in his computer and sent them to print, printing using the office printer and then got, got them all stamped uh, page by page. The witness added that he also received an agreement between Gump Petroleum and PSTV Energy by email. But for, for Adex Energy, he made a search in the official and found copies of an agreement with Gump Petroleum and uh, with, 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 with Amens. Now again, he, I mean, he, he got, uh, in, uh, they got in touch with him again by PSTV to, uh, with an email, but now he did a search and found uh, the, 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 uh, the agreement with uh, Adex Energy. As finance, and um, <clears throat> I cannot believe a protest letter would be written to, uh, to the company. And, and um, finance was not aware of that letter. I cannot believe that these companies would be dealing with this, 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 this international companies will be dealing with, with, with gun petroleum without the finance aware. Where does he think that finance get the, um, um, uh, uh, gun petroleum get their source of revenue? Where does he believe that gun petroleum get their source of revenue? This is not only one or two companies not being aware. He was not aware of none of them. None of them. Not any of them. Not only that, oh, I was not aware of these two companies. Yes, we could have think about possible, you know, these people. But the entire uh, network of, of companies that, that deal with your company, you be the financial manager, you are not aware of them, and you don't, uh, you are the one dealing with finance. Where, where do you think you have the stream? I mean, uh, your revenue, revenue is coming from. We move on. Okay. It continues to say the lawyer for state, state M.D. Mbalo, then submitted the copies of the agree, uh, agreed documents to the court, and the court then admitted uh, admitted them as the evidence brought by the state. The PW1, which is scattered still, continued that towards week 102 of October 2021, he received a call from the first accused, that is Sehu Drame, at around 10 p.m. And he, PW1, asked him what, what was going on because it was unusual the first accused to call him at that time. He make an alleg allegations here that uh, uh, as, uh, after two weeks of operations, uh, uh, when he assumed this position as acting managing director, he was contacted by Mr. Sehul Drame, who is the first accused, and, and uh, around 10 p.m. in the afternoon, and asked him what was going on. He said that this was an unusual occurrence. He, he said then, Drame informed him that he is from a board meeting and that there was a stock shortage at the depot. Okay, just a minute, just a minute. I might have this wrong. Um, this is the way I've read it as it is. My understanding, he said, the um, uh, PW1, uh, PW1 continued, the pers um, prosecution witness one continued um, that towards week 102 in October. Means that Sehu Drame was still managing director then, according to uh, the, 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 the follow-up. He received a call f uh, from PW1 Sehu Drame at around 10 p.m. The statement did not know that Sehu, uh, who was the managing director. He just said, okay, uh, Sehu Drame, then he must have been the managing director then. Let's assume that is the case. Uh, ask, asking him 
um, what's go going on, which was unusual. He said that Sehu Drame, he said then Sehu Drame informed him that he, he is from a board meeting and there was a stock shortage at the depot. He said Sehu Drame uh, informed him that he, he Sehu Drame as managing director came from a board meeting and uh, as um, an issue of stock was raised. Now, this is interesting. If the managing director, Sehu Drame, knew that the accountant did not know about the stocks, did not know about uh, the, 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 uh, the stocks or everything else, why did Sehu call him? Why did Sehu call him to verify? Why Sehu did not just go to the operational director? Who, who should not know, know? But he happened to ask him uh, what was going on. Uh, uh, the stock. Let's read further to, to see. He said then say who informed him that uh, he is, is from a board meeting and this there there was a stock shortage at the depot. He mentioned he mentioned Abdurrahman Barrow. He told me that Mr. Barrow and others are trying to find me. A, a day or so after I saw a group of people come to the office then went to the office of uh, of the false accused. After a few minutes, I saw them going around the depot. I observed that Malian trucks were parked towards the depot, and they have been there for two or three months. I also observed that two to three trucks were loaded loaded a day, and they used, used to load 12 to 13 trucks a day. But this time around, they loaded two or three Malian trucks a day, um, he told the court. Now, Again, you see, this is the problem with the prosecution. The investigation is not complete. This guy, um, as a witness, is just something more to explain. He is giving insinuations. And it was the role, responsible of the investigation to get out of that insinuation, to get facts. What do you, what, what are you trying to insinuate here? That Malian talks were present at the site. Malian trucks are, are, are norm, I mean, this Malian trucks spent two to three months, and and and, and the, the the Malian trucks used to, I mean, uh, spend less time. And what I insinuated, what I insinuated. But let's move on again. He said um, that Sehu Drama informed him that uh, this Mister uh, Abdurrahman Barrow was asking about him, him the accountant. Now this is the accountant. He doesn't know anything about stocks. But now Abrahman Barrow is asking, the, uh, trying to find his accountant, Mr. Keda, um, to find me. A day or so after, he saw a group of people who uh, uh, come to the office. Who are these people? Who are this group of people? This is where the prosecution should uh, have this trial. Who are this group of people? Now, he saw a group of people. That come to the office. They went. Get, they went to the uh, office of the force accused. They went to the managing director office. This is Sehu Drame. After a few minutes, he saw. He said, "I saw them going around the depot. I observed that Malian trucks were parked towards the depot, and they they have been there for two to three months. I also observed that two or three trucks were loaded a day, and they used to be uh, loading uh, 12, 12 to thirteen trucks a day. But this time around, they loaded two to three trucks." Uh, uh, Malian talks a day, he told the court. Now, he, what my understanding here, he's saying that there's something, something unusual going on. He observed there's something unusual going on. But it seems that he only observed that when he was alerted by Sehu oh, there's a problem with stocks. Now, uh, the two, uh, uh, a day or two after, he said a group of people came. We don't know who those group of people are. He should tell us. There are inspectors or whatever where with ministries or departments or businessmen who are they? He didn't tell us that, but he said that they came there. He, they went to the managing director office and they later saw them walking around the depot. But what he observed was there were trucks that uh, come from Mali, which is not unusual. They buy uh, petrol from from the Gambia. They uh, were there for, for two to three months. That's unusual because probably there's a problem with stock, and and they only loaded two to three to, uh, trucks a day rather than 11 to 12 trucks uh, a day. Guys, I don't want to divert this program, but did you remember when Barrow went and visited Gun Petroleum? That was in May. This happened in October. When it happened in May, 
I alerted Gambians that something is going to happen to Gun Petroleum. There is something going on in Gun Petroleum. The only reason Barrow attended Gun Petroleum is to look for opportunities to, to rob that place. And in a few months after, the same group that the cabal of Barrow and the Gun Petroleum, uh, cabal of Barrow and the Petroleum um, um, marketers, uh, um, Idi Job and um, Mohammed Ja and others. Remember that trip they were meant to go to Dubai. And, and we make sure that trip was cancelled. Because there are so much on uh, uh, the, the thing in the trip. Uh, uh, that was a few months after May. The trip was cancelled. This is just to tell you how much the cabal have been involved in this. And this is why the investigations are not complete. Let's move on. He uh, further asked, um, just a minute, let me have a drink. Okay. The, 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 um, it read, I'm reading the paper here. He said, further ask whether there is a direct relationship between gum, gum petroleum and Mali. We just Keta responded in the negative and said Mali comes through Madicon trading. Mr. Keta informed the court that because of the slow pace of loading their trucks, one person from Mali sent their staff to come and make a follow-up so that their trucks can be loaded as soon as possible. Now, what I don't understand what he meant that they don't have a relationship. I mean, this this is again not clear. Obviously, Gun Petroleum have a relationship with with uh, with, with, with Mal, not Mali, the cold country. Uh, in Malian coming to get petrol from there. Either, as he said, they come to Medicon Trading. Now, Medicon Trading, who are they? I think the prosecution uh, uh, ship has who, who who are Medicon Trading. Are they licensed um, traders in the country, or what? If they're licensed traders and they come to Gun Petroleum to take petrol, then. They have a relationship with Gun Petroleum. That's that's how it works. Gun Petroleum on the store the petrol and make sure the petrol goes to the uh, people authorized to take the petrol. Now, if they stop the petrol and and Madicom, uh, are authorized to take petrol from there and and sell it to Malian business people and Malian business people come and pay the petrol, they have a relationship. That's what the relationship should, should be. But again, it's not clear. But Gambians can think why 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 things are not that clear. He continued, Mr. Ketter continued, Mr. Ketter informed the court that because of the slow pace of loading, there are trucks, one person from Mali sent their staff, one person from Mali sent their staff to come and come, to come, come follow up uh, 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 that their truck can be loaded as soon as possible. He said that then Mali decided to approach him in his office. Malian, the Malian decided to approach him in his office uh, to help them load their trucks because they have been there for so long. Now, he is saying that because of the delay, delay, uh, delay, uh, the delay that was happening, the people in Mali sent one of their staff to Gambia to investigate and they approach him. Him asked now the, the managing, uh, the, the financial uh, manager, uh, manager. Now, why did they approach him? And he said before that he didn't know of, of, of the uh, international traders. But if he can be accessed by individuals to help to, to find, uh, for their loads, how come he did not know about the financial traders? What he is um, uh, refusing to admit. You know, because it's, it's either ignorance or, or thinking that people are ignorant but he cannot be in the position and say he didn't know the existence of the operation of the company for four and a half years or, or he's incompetent. Let's move on. That's, that's when the guy came to him. He, he, he continued. He said, I decided to call the second accused person, Lamin Gassama, and relay the Malian message to him and ask him why the Malian trucks were not being loaded. But the second accused, Lamin Gassama, did not like it and he went wanted me to focus on my financial department, not operations. We had a bitter agreement on the call because even though I am not the operations officer, I am an employee of the company, when there is an issue, I should have a voice on it. He, Lamin Gassama, uh, told me that if the staff from the Malian company comes to me, he should 
bar them from entering the depot when when call uh, call uh, when the call ended. I advise the Malian staff to speak to the company. Now, Mr. Keta is telling us that when when he was approached by the Malian uh, representative, he he approached the operational director. Now. He's, he's claiming that he has a responsibility to do that because he works within the company. He, he should even say that he worked at the senior position of the company. And he said that Mr. Gesama was not happy for him interfering or accusing him for, to, to be interfering into matters that is not within his sector or, or within his department. And he, he, he in, emphasized that, no, he have a right to do that. But Gassama uh, advised him that next time it, they come to you, don't even allow them to, uh, to the premises, but, uh, um, uh, but uh, stop them from uh, accessing the premises. But then he advised the Malian to, to speak to his company. His big company, I mean, I think he means the Malian's company. But I'm not reading further down. I've not read it all, but I'm just asking the question now. Did he inform the managing director? If the managing director failed to deal with it, did he escalate it to the board of directors? This should be the procedure. This should be the procedure. Okay, let's, guys, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not reading your um, comments. I just want to concentrate on this, but I will read them later. He continued. Uh, okay. Now he um, he said he continued to say I decided to send a WhatsApp message to the first accused, Sehu Drame. Oh, good. Okay, asking him what happened to the Malians. I explained to him that they are complaining bitterly. He respond his his response was that they don't have have release form from Trafalgar, therefore they cannot do it. Mr. Kater told the court. Mr. Kater would continue his testimony at the mid, mid, midday today. For it. okay now. He said he contacted the managing director, which is right. And he was, uh, the managing director said that the Malians did not get a clearance from Trafagoria. Then, who is, he should have, uh, knew, he should know who Trafagoria is. To say that he didn't know Trafagoria until he became an acting managing director is a lie. If, if he was told that he didn't get clearance from Trafalgaria, he, he should ask who, if he didn't know Trafalgaria, he should ask who is Trafalgaria. But I don't think that he can be manage, uh, have managing finance in, in, at that level and not know who, who the company Trafalgaria is. There's a cover up here. There's a cover up here. I, as I said, I'm not vying for any of them, but we're going through the testimonies. And this is going to collapse. And Gambians are, are paying for this. This is my interest in this case. Let's just move on a minute. Um, now he said the managing director reassured him or told him that um, the guy, um, the Malians don't have a clearance from Trafalgaria. And Mr. Keta is going to um, continue his testimony. Um, okay, um, let me try and get the next one. Okay, um, this is the cross examination. There's something not connecting here. Um, this first place, Gam Gam Petrium, three days cross. Yes, yeah, this, um, uh, um, I mean, this is the cross examination. Let me see where it starts. Okay, let me read, um, start with the cross-examination. The co cross-examination said that Mr. Amadou Keita, senior finance manager and former acting managing director of the Petroleum Storage Depot in Lamin Mandinari, whose first appearance on the 9th May um, 
as prosecution witness in the trial uh, involved two staff gun petroleum was cross-examined on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. The second person named Sehu Drame, uh, the, the, uh, the two staff, sorry, the two staff, namely Sehu Drame, first accused, former managing director, and Lamin uh, Gazama, second accused, former operational manager of the um, institutions, are charged with eight counts, three counts of economic crime, and five other counts in, um, in, in the alleged corruption scandal. The eight counts are levied against the two in their maiden court appearance in the court, uh, I mean, uh, court in Banjul on the 4th April 2022, presided by the just, uh, Justice Hadi Roach. Roach. Their appearance in court followed their arrest regarding their alleged involvement in the alleged corruption, malpractice, and missing of $20 million uh, at, at the depot. Lawyer and um, this is just a repeat of lawyer M. 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 D. Mbalo represented the state, whilst lawyer Christopher E. Many, uh, B. S. Conte, S. Akimbo, uh, Boki, Bokirin, Pauline, and Samsung Silla uh, represented the first and second accused person in the hearing. Mr. Keta P. 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 W. One told the court during uh, cross examination. Um, Led by counsel Christopher E. Many, lawyer for the uh, uh, um, lawyer for the accused persons, that Gump Petroleum have a license to import Gump Petroleum have has a license to import petroleum products, and that the fuel imp imported by different international companies is co, co, co mingled in a tank. Okay, now the cross examination have started now. Now Mr. Keta is telling the court through the court cross examination that the gun petroleum have a license to import petrol. But again, international companies have license to import petrol and all petrol are, are put into the same tanks. There's nothing like, this is the tank for gun petroleum, this is for uh, PSTV or another company, no. The same tank, you have 50 liters, they put a 50 liter, somebody else would have 100, they put 100 and 200, but obviously I can't. Now, how, this is interesting. Then if he knew that, how did he account for that stock? How did he, I know the operational money account, but as an accountant, he should then be aware of the stock. Then he knew, by then he should knew, know the international companies, because he said, this is the procedure. Then he knew that the procedure is international companies do bring in stock. How did he not know the international companies might bring in stock? Saying that he didn't know until he became in my acting managing director, this information was kept away from him. I doubt it. Now, he continued to say, ask where the local oil companies have inspectors in uh, at Gun Petroleum Depot. Keta said, as far as he was aware, he does not know any local inspector stationed at the depot uh, by a local uh, oil company. This is what it means that uh, the uh, oil comp local oil marketing companies um, from Kasul uh, and other companies uh, on the ground where they have an inspector. He said he doesn't know. As far as he's, he's concerned, he doesn't know. Okay. Then he co it continued to say, I was. he said, I was not aware of the international trading uh, trade, uh, traders having inspectors until when the st storage, uh, shortage of stock at the depot came up. That, that was when I came to know that Trafalgar have inspectors at the depot, but for the local traders, I, did, uh, I, I don't know of any. And as far as I'm concerned, they don't have local inspectors, PW1 responded. Now, PW, I mean, this is Keta responding that he did not know about local uh, companies having inspectors, but he said that he was only aware of even Trafalgar. Um, an international trading company having inspectors on the ground when the shortage happened. It continued. Also as whether it is regular, requirement, sorry, it is requirement for both the international traders and local oil companies to have inspectors at the depot who will sign and endorse the holding certificates of the traders. PW1 responded that he does not know whether it is a requirement for the traders to have an inspector, uh, uh, inspector at the port. He informed the court that it is a, a, a domain of operations to know whether it is required for both the international traders and local uh, uh, companies to have inspectors at the depot who will sign and endorse the holding, uh, uh, holding certificate of traders. Now, it is quite true that that's the major role, major role of operations, but as an accountant, 
I <coughs> I think he might have an idea. Or if he did not have an idea, the time he assumed the position of managing director for four weeks or six weeks or how long it was, I think he should have known. Whether it is relevant to say that I come to know about this at that time or not, that's for people to think about that. Council um, Emeni said, exib um, said uh, Exhibit P1 tendered by the state lawyer is not only about to, um, uh, uh, only about a throughput agreement, but also combine both the throughput and the storage agreement. P uh, Council Emeni is putting it to the, 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 the witness that um, the agreement that was tendered by the uh, prosecut uh, prosecution um, I mean, it's a combination of the two put and a story agreement. It was not only one. This agreement, he continued, uh, uh, the lawyer many continued, uh, many continued. This agreement, as you can see, I would be able to identify which one is two put and which one is storage. Some of these things we usually refer to, uh, refer to, to our lawyers. But if you look at the document, PW1, as a whole, yes, it is both throughput and a story, uh, story argument, PW, PW, PW1 told the court. Okay, this is the PW1 say verifying and actually technically agreeing with, 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 with what has been put to him that uh, uh, this, what the document, that, that uh, agreement represents. It's not one, one entity, but it's about two entities. The witness continued that as, as the head of finance management at Gampitulum, he never received any money from international traders for storage. And he, he, he's, he's not aware that international traders pay storage fee to Gampitulum. This is so weird. This is so weird. As the head of finance, he did not know the source of his income, revenue. He doesn't know because the major this is a major revenue. This is a major revenue. Primarily, this is what gun petroleum should do. Storage. Now, if people are not paying storage to him or paying storage to a system that he can see, that's something now again we have to ask uh, how the in, uh, industry is run. But again, tells you that the, the, the prosecution again are not thoroughly bringing things uh, clearly to us and, and that was going to hamper their, uh, their, their case. The reason is not thorough because they are trying to keep people out of this and we'll, we'll, we'll get to that. He continued, PW1 said that two, uh, two put pay is charged to the local oil company and the charge are published by the Minister of Finance and Economic Affairs monthly. Say the two put is those documents uh, document are petrol, gas oil and, and kerosene. Now, He's saying that one source of revenue that he knew about is what the local companies are, are paying to, to the gun petroleum, which is monitored by the Minister of Finance. But anything out of that he doesn't know, especially coming from the, the, the international traders. Further ask whether the gun petroleum board of direct will carry a forensic audit before payment was affected to the appro approved um, settlement agreement, the witness responded in the negative. Whoop, 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 whoop. Now, this I think was brought in, in prematurely by the uh, defense, but I think the defense uh, knew that this is the only occasion they might have for this uh, witness and they put it there. And this is very important. Now, the defense is asking after the controversy came up. The government decided to go and settle. Why did the government rush to settle the disputed am amounts without thoroughly investigating a forensic investigation, not an investigation run by conflicted body? The present twin fire finance minister, when he was trained, because the present finance minister is a body body to to to, to Mohammed Dia and, and and extended it the job and orders. Just as the diet of Pura is an extension of uh, Mohammed Jah, Idijob and others. Now, these people are conflicted into these things. Now, if these people, uh, the, 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 the task force that did the investigation, they did not did, uh, I mean, use a forensic uh, accountants 
independent accountants to go and do the forensics uh, to study to understand what actually transpired but government it was ready to pay because government don't want to hold people to account because those people to be hold account they are government body body and probably if they if they dig deep then the money trail might be found that that goes to the first lady and, and the president or go to Musa Drame for the NPP this is where the weaknesses are that now how can you hold these people accountable when you don't have a, 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 an accounting document that is that that is legit that is legit now if the defense is smart to bring bring all these conflicting people to the to, 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 uh, for, for a start what i see now if i'm the defense i'm not gonna even call witness i just gonna submit no case case to answer because there's no case to answer so far but if this had to go to for them to bring a witness i will ask them to bring the former uh, the finance minister the former trade minister to bring the poorer guys bring all those people on that um, um uh, tax force to to grill them and and prove how conflicting they are uh, uh, and that the case would not have a merit it does not mean that the corruption did not happen the theft, the theft did not happen but they cannot pin this to uh, uh, deal into two, onto two people all the people responsible should be held accountable because if we allow this to continue always then these people will continue to run our state a cabal run our state with corruption and whenever something arises they can push two people out and and, and they insulate themselves and they continue the system has to be done uh, dealt with right he continued for the acts uh, about uh, uh, and Karima, he said no the board uh, he said the board has not done any forensic audit before making payment to the annex Trafagora and PSTV, he said. Guys, that is for Gambians to consume. This is this is why I said why our media are not pointing this out. They are, they're just bringing the transcript from the courts. Why are they uh, media houses are not uh, getting uh, experts to, to, to discuss this case? This is what accountability is. Let's move on. Um, he continued to say, then ask whether the now the the the, 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 the defense uh, lawyer asked then the asks whether he has knowledge on petroleum marketing and the witness answered in the negative. Now the head of finance did not have understanding. He, he doesn't have knowledge of, of petroleum marketing and he's the head of finance. I is it me? A lay person who doesn't know nothing, who doesn't think that it's relevant? Or is it actually relevant for the head of finance to understand the, the, the industry that he's operating in? Now, he, uh, the defense continued. I am putting it to you that because of your lack of experience of how these things are done, the Board of Gum Petroleum approved payment to these traders far in excess of what they have entitled to. If any, lawyer Mendy said, many, 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 many said, you see, now the defense is pointing the hole by. If you don't have knowledge of something, how can you look after that? Now he's telling him that because of he doesn't know how these things work, he is telling him that the, the, the board of directors of Gun Petroleum who are conflicted in, in, in this old saga themselves have paid money far more or, or, or money that was not even due to be paid to this uh, uh, private companies now we still gambians will be paying this money it's, it's gambian money but people that really took the money we are not paying for this money and that money could have 20 million dollars what change would it have done in a, you see that's why i said if we tell you that gambia can 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 can, can do better this is what we mean 20 million dollars can, can change a lot in the country how many schools how many hospitals can be equipped how many jobs can be created for youths how many industries can be created from 20 million dollars let's move on the the witness said he was not a member of board and did not uh, uh, and did not present the payment to the board for approval now he, as he, he said the, the payment was not done by, by his department, uh, the uh, Gun Petroleum Depart Finance 
because he's had a finance. But somebody else paid. Who paid? Who paid? You see, the cabal are robbing us, broad daylight. They can do anything and get money out of us. This is why it's important, and I hope the politicians can, can uh, take this up. But I'm not holding my breath for that. He continued to say, Lawyer Many also put to witness uh, that Adex Energy was overpaid to the tune of $2.4 million uh, because of the witness lack of experience. But PW1 responded that he, he, he would not know whether Adex was overpaid or not. The, uh, now the, the defense lawyer is putting it out there again. That look, actually, Adex was paid $2.4 million more. And Adex company is conflicted. They are part of the command. Because of, he said, telling to the witness that because of a lack of experience, this has happened. Now we'll see how the defense is going to put, I mean, uh, prove that. It continues. On, 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 whom, uh, uh, on whom sign the check, invoices and, and, and transfer in respect to the payment of the traders, Keta said all the payments were authorized by the Gump Petroleum Board of Directors. The Gump Petroleum Board should, be, should have been come and then will, should appear. The defense should, should bring them and then to explain this payment. Now he said that everything was approved by the Gump Petroleum Board of Directors. Another conflicting person, Tambedu, because of, because of his relationship with, with Mambure Njai, and we knew this case, this issue, Mambure was a part of every, uh, part of the cabal. You see, that's why I said before elections they will not take this case. After elections they will see how to bear this case, and this is what they did. If the case is thrown out, Gambia lose. Nobody will be held accountable because of the poor prosecution they're doing because they're trying to protect certain individuals. It moved on. Um, but the defense lawyer insisted that his question was not answered. And in, in reply, witness Kater told him that they did issue checks adding the, uh, the, uh, add, um, adding the invoice from the trader themselves. You see, Mr. Kater now. First, my understanding was even Gum Petroleum did not pay. Actually, Gump Petroleum paid, and, and he, he, he is the one who processed the invoice. He is the one who issued the checks. Yeah, the board would approve. Obviously, the board would have to approve that amount of money. But as the money uh, uh, in charge of finance, he's, he's inexperienced. He doesn't know how to make sure, no, we should not pay this invoice, or this invoice is overinflated. He doesn't know. This is the, <laughs> this is the dilemma we have. The problems we have in the country. The guy is not fit for purpose. Or he is, is lying to us. He knows exactly what he's doing. He's just corrupt. He's part of the cabal. Or he's been bought by the cabal. Now. And he, he continued. Uh, the, law, the lawyer asked, did you follow those uh, provisions in arrival at, at this payment? Lawyer Mendy asked. The witness said those provisions are for local oil marketing company uh, companies and said that do, do, that does not apply to the international traders ADEX, uh, 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 Energy, Tafagala and PSD. Now this is another point of <laughs> to note here. Now he said that that provisions, those provisions are for the local uh, marketing companies, but they are not for the international traders. This is the person who told us he didn't know about international traders until the crisis happened and he became an MD, acting MD. But and he said in the procedures, this is not inter who were the, who who did he think were the inter international traders? Who did he think were the international traders? I hope the defense would would turn round in the address to, to point out the 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 the, 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 the lack of, I mean lack of um. The word for it again. How unreliable this witness is. This is a lie. I knew it was a lie from the beginning. Now it's here. He is admitting that he knew the existence of international traders. Until if if he knew there are international traders and he wants to tell them he doesn't know who they are, and, and his position as the chief of finance. That's why. Let's move on. 
Lawyer Many then referred the witness to Exhibit 8. That was an agreement between Gampetrolia and Trafalgar. Note, noted that Article 7 makes provision on how to deal with this, uh, uh, with, uh, deal with calculation. The witness said at the time the trader, trader made their request, he did not have information relating to the quantity received from them. He agreed with lawyer many that board of directors was dissolved after the shortage of stock at the depot. Guys, this is serious. Now, this person is processing uh, payments. And he processed a payment. Now, the lawyer pointed to, to him that, look, the calculations for this payment is, 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 is noted on Article 7. You should know. And, and the witness come in to agree with the, the lawyer and say that, yeah, the time that this thing was done, he did not get the quantity because of what the board was dissolved now is that not a major setback in holding accountability how can how can this case be proven against these two if the case is this weak this should be the star witness this should be the star witness if this is weak how they can hold accountable to these two he agreed with lawyer many that the board of directors was, was dissolved at, this, uh, at the time of the shortage, shortage at the depot. What interim measures was put in? What interim measures was put in before uh, leaving the operations to continue? Because of uh, knowing that the entire system is conflicted. Was not fit for purpose, you bring in people to receive the company. And to make sure it sounds before they but I give it back. Let's move on. Um, he uh, okay. Many then ask the witness whether he knows any member of board board who have training or expertise in petroleum marketing, and and the witness said he would he would not know because he does not have access to their resume. Fine. Then um, I am put a uh, the the lawyer said defense lawyer said I am putting putting it to you that the board had no uh, the board had none who have such knowledge or expertise they were involved in things that were technical many said now many the, the defense is claiming that the entire board don't have one person with expertise uh, experience in the trading of petroleum this is scandalous. This is scandalous. Do they have competency for the job? I don't know. They might not have expertise, but what were, what were they dealing with? This is something that, again, I hope Gambians will ask the questions. And that's why we expect the, the platforms to bring experts to sit down and discuss these issues, rather than frivolous political issues, just to uh, divide us further down. That's all they're interested in. We have experts in the country or in the diaspora that they can link uh, in their programs to discuss these in important issues. To educate us. That's what platforms should be. But we don't see it here. They are not touching this case. Because a lot of conflicted people who, have, who are very powerful. Only thing they will do is just to present the, new, uh, the proceedings. Let's move on. Um... Um, um, the, um, the, 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 the witness, continue, uh, uh, Mr. Keter continued, I cannot speak for the board. The witness replied to lawyer many. And um, it continued, do you think it was right for the board to approve payment without applying the formula in uh, the agreement? Many ask. I don't have an answer, the witness replied. No, you have an answer. Because he is a senior manager, accounts manager. He should have an answer to that. He should answer to that, it's, yes, it's wrong for the board to approve payment without following the due process. That's common sense. Then this is saying that the board approved payment without following the decision. Now the case is falling down. Why, why did the prosecution bring this case? When the investigation were, this is the same problem with Solo Sending's case. I said it. And every other case they brought, they deliberately would bring cases and not done, done, do it right. It, it continued. He said, <clears throat> um, 
many said in all in all uh, many many is the lawyer many 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 said in all storage agreement there is compulsory insurance to cover all losses in petrol products in store in store with reputable international insurance companies to cover all liabilities under various liability to the tune of 25 million dollars that's just a statement he made I will see whether it's follow up on the next page. Guys, you, um, I was struggling to get these details, in fact, from the pages anyway. But it, um, the day May 16, 2022, May 16, 2022, it says, uh, but Keta said that it's not correct, saying that insurance is for general liability and not lost in petroleum product. Now, the, the lawyer have made a point to say that, look, uh, these companies are, are required, I mean, to uh, to make sure they have an insurance that that cover liability, uh, um, I mean, I mean, I mean, for ve uh, for, for ve cover uh, all liabilities under various liabilities to the tune of twenty five million dollars. But um, but Keta said no, not correct. Saying the insurance is for general liability and not loss in petrol stock. That's what they said. Lawyer many asked the witness whether general liability exclude loss of petrol, the products stored in gun petroleum, but the witness responded in the negative. However, lawyer many insisted that it's included. That's a dispute uh, that they have to fix uh, or, or, or the judge would have to verify what is fact here, whether they have insurance or not. Lawyer many told the witness that gun petroleum did not claim the 25 million insurance because uh, of their mis conceived belief that the loss of petrol uh, product is excluded despite paying their premium to the international insurance company annually whoop 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 this is quite interesting now lawyer many the defense is saying that gun petroleum failed to claim the the 25 million dollars for lost the lawyer many is saying that it's included in the insurance but they 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 they, they did not understand that's why they failed to include it, include it uh, um, in, uh, in the uh, in the. Uh, uh, that's why they they failed to do the claim, despite paying a premium um, uh, for the insurance. But I think lawyer Mandy might be missing a point here. I think, I believe, in fact, the board of directors realized that they have not followed the due process for compensation. They have not done a forensic audit to prove the missing stock. Now, if they had to put a claim to insurance companies, insurance companies would do their due diligence to, to determine whether there is actual loss or how the loss was in court in order not only to effect payment, but in order to, to calculate their risk in, in, in taking up that insurance again so that their premium can be increased or can be charged right. Lawyer many missed the ball there. I think that, sh that should be the point put to him. They have not done it right. Because they are conflicted. Now, this is the reason they have not claimed an insurance on this. Gambia, you see how, your, uh, how our resources are managed. They don't care. They don't care. They, they just, their lifestyle, they leave their houses, they, their children go to school outside Gambia. If they are in the Gambia, they go to international school. Their families don't attend our hospitals. They go to Dakar minimum or they get, come to Europe for medical. They, they, everything else, they don't, they, they don't care whether Nawek runs or not because they have 24 hours supply of energy. They have, they build their big fences. They have a CCTV. They have everything in there. They don't care about the average Gambian. Now it's for the average Gambian to wake up and care for themselves. These are the people influencing you to vote for criminals to be in office so that they, their cabal can continue to enjoy. Let's continue here. I can help myself not to um, dig digress on, on today's. Uh, and it continues. The witness still insists that the loss of product is not covered by the insurance and added that the general liability clause does not include loss of uh, product. And um, why do you find it necessary to include insurance when it does not cover product? Um, many ask. The, 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 the prosecution witness, Keta is still insisting, no, it's not in, uh, involved. I don't know. He's he insisting. The judge, judge will determine that. But the lawyer has turned around, the defense lawyer turned around to say, why do you find it necessary to include insurance when, uh, in, in, include insurance, so yeah, insurance when it does not cover products, many ask. 
and the agreement is not the same the agreement is not the same as the insurance contract with the witness answer the witness said the agreement is uh, is not the same as insurance contract the witness answer the witness said he received the claim from Trafagora through one Abdurrahman Barrow, director of Star Oil Gambia Limited, who forwarded the claim to him via email. He added that Barrow was also board member of Gam Petroleum. That's it. That's it. That's it there. That's it there. Conflict of interest. You see, now you have a board member, board member who is in fact making so they get paid this his company get paid who is there to protect the interest of the people and in, interesting star oil it's a company that is associated to president barrow and the first lady star oil is a mauritanian con company owned by uh, um, uh, mauritanian they are not um, how, 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 they said owned by Mauritanians, the company owned by Mauritanians. And in order for the company, the company, in fact, Barrow, Barrow in, insisted the shares that was meant to be sold and social security was to buy the dossier, Barrow insisted that those shares to be sold to this company. Barrow insisted the shares to be sold to this company. Now, you can see the conflict here. This is why I said that the case is getting weaker because of things are not done right. Now, uh, uh, Mr. Keta is telling us that he, he is just kind of uh, uh, um, taking instructions from the board to facilitate something that he doesn't even believe it to be right. He said, the witness, this is Keta said, he received the claims from Trafagora through one Amadou uh, uh, Rahman Barrow. Barrow, a director of Star Oil Gambia Limited, who forwarded the claims to him via email. He added that Barrow was also a board uh, of member of Gump Petroleum. Now, if Gump Petroleum board members did not ask for a forensic audit, now what? I mean, this is all conflicting. Now, how can two people be held responsible for this? Lawyer Many put it to him that their agreement clearly indicates that the channel of communication between Gump Petroleum and Trafagora is either through the email or postal address there, there in provided which the witness admitted now why the board member who is a member uh, company this who's who's represent the company interest of star oil would be taking emails from Trafagora and forward it down to the district rather than Trafagora sending emails through what lawyer mainly is putting pointed out here to the normal channels that agreed or the postal address being agreed agreed now you see the conflict of interest now you see the lack of transparency now this is what is happening now lawyer many put it to him that uh, lawyer many put to him that their agreement clearly indicates the channel of communication between gum petroleum and Trafalgar is either through the email or postal addresses there in provided which uh, the witness admitted now, why that uh, that Amadou Barrow or who uh, Mr. Barrow would be uh, be the, the intermediary, and Mr. Barrow does not work for uh, I mean Trafalgar. He he works for uh, Star Oil, a Mauritanian company. If he continued to say, it is not strange for Trafalgar, whom you said has an agent underground in the Gambia did not communicate to you, Gump Petroleum, through their agent. They did not send a hard copy of their claim to Gump Petroleum. They did not send it via email to acting general manager or Gump Petroleum. But it, but it had to be sent to someone who has to forward it to you. Is that not strange, many ask. I tell you, I've not read this, I've not read this newspaper. I decided not to read it because I want to have it first. This and this this was my question. In fact, I saw it coming. Now the, the lawyer is putting it to him. Why Trafalgar got an agent on the ground? Why not the agent post it to you or bring it to you? The card copy. Why the agent did not uh, email it to you? This is what the regulation says. 
This is the due process. Send it via email. Send it to say, no, why does he have to send it to a third party? A third party who is conflicted. He's representing another company and he's a board member. <laughs> I would love to address this. I would love to represent this uh, case to, 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 to address, uh, 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 address for the defense. Because this is clear court. This case, this case cannot stand. If justice in the country, this case will not stand. It failed. It failed completely. This is the starting news. Why? Let's see what, what his response will be. The witness said it was not strange at, at, that, at that time before lawyer Mendy put it to him that Abrahman Barrow is the managing director of Petro Gas which the witness admitted and added that it was the same man who came to his office together with one Ibrahim and Yai in connection to settling in the matter of Tra Trafagora. He is not only linked to uh, Petro, uh, probably Petrogas in, is the parent company. Petrogas and, and Star Oil. He's linked to Petrogas, he's linked to Star Oil. Now, you see what Barrow have created? And yes, this is on the barrel. That's why I said when Barrow visited the plants, uh, Gun Petroleum, I said, oh, the cabal is taking over Gun Petroleum. This is going to happen. And whoever goes to my timeline will see it. Go in May, 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 May 2021, when they visited the uh, petroleum plant. I knew this was going to happen. When they were going to Dubai, I knew, I said series of things they were going to Dubai. And this is all part of it. They wanted to take over for the Malian market. They wanted to take over because the Malian market was lucrative. And Bissau market was lucrative. Now, because of this disruption, Senegal is going to benefit. Let's move on. The witness, <coughs> the witness said it was not strange at the time. I mean, what are you telling me? It should be strange. You should be alert. You are a senior manager. You should know. No, this is not right. We move on. He said, did that not seem strange to you, considering all the circumstances Trafalgar have, has an agent underground, many quiz? It was not strange, the witness, uh, witness answer. With all this evidence, he said it's not strange. Many said, Adex Energy, SA, own Atlas Company. You see, this is the one linking linking to. This is, this is um. Let me not lock this phone. This is an indication again. Adex Energy owns Atlas, and Atlas is linked to a job. You see, what I'm telling you, cabal. You see the cabal now, clear? A local oil company. But the witness said he does not know. He, if he doesn't know, he is lying. Mr. Keter is lying. Everybody knows, not even people in the oil business. He cannot be a four and a half years and even acted as a managing director at Gun Petrol, not know that um, Adex Energy SA owns at last. If he did not know, he's lying to his team. He's lying. He did not know. Many put, uh, put it to the witness that Ibrahim and Yai mentioned ab above is the director of Star Oil, Gambia Limited, and at the same time was member of the Gambia Petroleum Board, but the witness said he does not know. You know, it's one thing to say, I don't know, to get out of things. This is what we have. The witness is not reliable. He, he either incompetent or not, the thing is in incompetence. This is a common knowledge. Common knowledge. This is common knowledge. He cannot be in the industry, serve in the industry at that level as manager of finance, not know this common knowledge. Lawyer Many said Star Oil Gambia Limited has always been interested as they have previously indicated their interest over the position of number two uh, 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 accused person, the op uh, op um, operations manager, but the witness denied knowledge of that. He is lying too. That was known to everyone. And ha I have written about that. Star Oil wanted the position of, 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 of uh, what do you call it, 
operations operations manager. Everybody knew that. He would have heard about that. He cannot insulate his ears of, of that going out in there. I knew about that here. And I said about that. I've, I've written about it. And go, if anybody follow my posting will see me mentioning that they want the position. Why do they want the operations manager? You see? They position themselves. Who are suffering is the Gambians. It's the Gambians. Now, when it comes to elections, these are not the issues we bring up. We bring up about tribe, about region, about other things. These are the things we should educate the people. This is what us bringing our suffering. It's not about tribe or anything else. Tribe is a destruction. He continued to say, Council Mendy said in 2020, Star Oil wrote a letter to Gun Petroleum expressing their desire to take over the job, uh, job of the second accused person, but the witness further denied knowledge of that. Lawyer Mendy asked the witness why the storage agreement with ADEX was not provided before the court. Um, I have to refer to my lawyer, the witness answered. You see, now that is failure to disclose. Failure of disclosure. He says he's going to refer to his lawyer to find out that. The storage ag agreement for ADEX was not. Who prepared this case? It's prepared by the AG Chambers. How can they not know that? They have enough time to prepare themselves. Um, continue. Uh, she said, I am putting it to you that the reason why you did not, not produce it was because no such agreement exists. Many said, I did not, I, I don't agree with that, the witness said. I put it to you that you did not carry out a proper audit before you agreed to take uh, make payment to Alex. The lawyer, um, 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 many said. Now, Lawyer Manny is insisting on this. I don't think Lawyer Manny would just have confidence to insist on this. He said, no, there's no existing agreement with Alex. You just make payments without yeah, doing an audit to ascertain this. He said, no, that's not true. Ah, the judge will make sure this is proven anyway. Uh, it's going to be interesting. They continue to say there was, there was no audit. There, these figures were reconciled with the stock cash we have. The reconcil reconciliation was done by the second, uh, second accused person and the Minister of Trade. I was present, the witness said. <laughs> this is interesting. Now, he is um, he's admitting there is no audit. Uh, it was a reconciliation done between uh, the, 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 the second accused and the Minister of Trade. This is the part person who is now Minister of Finance. He said he was present as, as a witness. Keta said he was present as, as a witness. Why not an audit? Why a reconciliation? Which is more, more, more credible? But again, um, uh, lawyer many said, I am putting it to you that it is not correct because these figures were not the figures second accused person walk upon or, or provided, many said. Many is the, the many is, um, Disputing that fact, that no, that's not true. That's not what the second accused have provided to you. It's going to be interesting to prove this. Um, he said, I don't know what the second accused person provided, but one thing I know is that I have seen a holding certificate signed by a second accused person, the witness said. Now, it's kind of a bit shaky. He said he doesn't know what the second person uh, provided. But he has seen a, a certificate been uh, signed by the second person. I think uh, that's a bit shaky. From from his initial refusal, it's a bit shaky. He's not hundred percent on that. He continued to say, when asked the whereabouts of the holding certificate, the witness said he does not know where it is. Many said the uh, said said the many the lawyer said uh, the board of GP did not see the full uh, the, um, dens uh, density. Of the of the trader, but decided to pay them using a vague density, which which is wrong. But the witness said he was he was not a board member. The board have to be brought brought into the courts. The board have to come in. Why the prosecution did not bring the board? I think the defense have to bring the board. Now many is telling him that you guys paid on pre 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 presumption on, of density. It's not an actual um, uh, check. He said no. He doesn't know. Papa, he doesn't know. He's not in the board. He's not a board member. Now he, this follows. 
The failure to consider these technical details by the people of Gun Petroleum resulted in, in the overpayment to those traders and in some places up to 200, two, uh, 200, 200, 200 dollars per ton, many say. Many saying that the failure of, of the, doing the due process or the following the technical, uh, uh, using the technical details have ensured, have, en um, have ensured that, that these people overpaid the traders or, or pay, overpaid the uh, made an overpayment to the traders to the tune of $200, uh, $200 per ton. Many said. Personally, Mr. Keta said, personally, I don't know. The witness said, the, the witness denied the uh, lawyer man this claim that the office work hours is from 8 to 4 and that the operational unit is from 8 to 2, Describe it, uh, describing it as not correct. Where, on, on whether the first accused person blocked the truck's pass, passway using his vehicle, the, second, uh, the first accused person knows that it was not like not lie about him the witness responded okay the witness said the Malians started coming to gun petroleum to purchase purchase products when uh, first accused person was the general manager of the company now what it read here is the first accused denied the lawyer Mendes uh, the first accused denied lawyer M the so so the first witness denied lawyer Mendes claim that the official working hours are are set from eight to four, and the operations unit is eight to two. Describe um, uh, it as a um, describing is not correct. On the other form, uh, on whether the force accused, which is uh, the ma former manager in Dalphi Shehu, personally blocked uh, blocked the truck's pa pathway using his vehicle, the force accused person know that uh, that's a lie, and the witness responded. I'm a bit confused there. The first accused person know that I will, oh sorry, the first accused person know that I will not lie. Now, what might have happened, this was not captured, uh, the witness have claimed, claimed that Sehu have blocked the, the, uh, the, 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 the passage of, of the trucks from Mali. And, and, and the lawyer was putting it to the witness that look, are you are lying about this? This did not happen, and he said, oh, "No, the first accused know that I'm not going to lie." The witness said that the Malian Malian started dealing with Gun Petroleum when Sehu became the managing director of the company. Many went ahead to say that the first accused person was the one who went to Mali and did the negotiations and arrangement. The the witness, on the other hand, said he was not aware of any official trip concerning the, the engagement. PW1, the witness, said some of the local oil marketing companies admitted liability and have been paying their debt in cars or returning products after the problem. Whoop, 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 whoop. Now, this is the problem, another problem here. Another problem here. Why those people are not charged? That is Ababaka Jawara, uh, Basari Jawara, uh, Jawara uh, I think um, uh, so name, and others. There are so many of them. Now, PW1, Keta is saying that these local companies have admitted liability of what? Stealing oil? Taking oil without permission? Whatever. What did they, or receiving stolen goods? Now, if you are charged for receiving your stolen goods, or you are apprehended for receiving stolen goods, is it to return the goods and walk away? Jambe decide that. Now, how can we win cases? If we are protecting others, now the case case would drop and Gambia will lose out because we pay decided to pay. He said he said that some of them admitted liability, and he said some, not all of them admitted liability. Who are the others don't admit liability? Why those people are not charged? Because in the charge sheet here, only two people are charged. Why they are not charged? He added that. He added that some of the OMG that failed to return their product uh, that they, they, they took in excess are, are facing uh, uh, litigation in the courts. It's, I didn't see that. With courts, it should be put together. He said some that did not pay are facing litigation in the courts. 
what verification does it face? It's not a civil case. It's theft. It's theft. It should be a criminal case. It should be a criminal case. If they accuse these people for facilitating or providing or selling, then they should produce the facilitators and people that receive. All of these people should be charged for criminal conduct, corruption, and whatever it is. And so that they can be found guilty. We cannot rescue these people, chosen few, and expect two people to be liable. We cannot prove a case on that. Just as the solo condescending case, the uh, uh, passport case, the, the fist fist case. This is the problem of this government. The system entirely is part of corruption. It's a cabal running the country. It continues. Um, Keta said Gun Petroleum recorded loss between January, uh, November 1st uh, and December November 1st and December 30 November 1st and December 31st 2021 Nope Nope I remember this case we raised it before November We raised it in October Adding that during the reconciliation, uh, reconciliation process, as of the end of December 2021, the record, uh, the record, they recorded negative uh, variance. He denied lawyer men, men, many claim that between November 1st, 2021, December 2021, Gampetrium uh, recorded a loss of up to 20, uh, 20, I mean, 2,700 metric tons. But lawyer insists that the products were lost or missing at Gun Petroleum. In response, the witness said whether lost or missing, all he can say was that their reconciliation balance indicated that the book balance record was more than the fiscal uh, stock they had, that, uh, that they recorded negative variance. You will agree with me, the lawyer said to him, do you, will you, agree? you will agree with me that the problem Gun Petroleum is a system and a process problem and not a personal problem many said he he said i i don't agree with that because the personnel are the ones administrating the system keta replied the witness was discharged and 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 and, and prosecution promised to call other witnesses now this is the basis of the false prosecution witness and i tell you by going through this 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 witness i didn't I don't think um, they, ha they are presenting a case that can find these two guilty of, of the crime they are charged. And that means that the case will be, will be lost. And when this case is lost, um, what's going to happen again? They'll forget about it. Just as the fisheries and other cases, they'll turn around to say, hey, we're going to appeal. Now, we have another witness. Guys, I, I might just um, soon finish this program. I'm mean, taking longer than I... Uh, I, I anticipated. Um, the second um, prosecution witness is Lamin Toure in Gun Petroleum Corruption Scandal Trial has cross examined by a defense lawyer at the High Court. Toure, who doubled as the acting operational manager of Gun Petroleum Storage Facility Depot in Lamin Mandinari, first appeared in the court on the 16th May as second prosecution witness. Um, the trial involved two staff of Gun Petroleum. The second staff, okay, uh, we got all that. Um, the the eight counts are uh, okay uh their appearance okay lawyer lawyer md mbalu representing the state whilst lawyer christopher we got that suddenly after concluding suddenly after concluding his testimony in answering the questions of the defense lawyer during cross-examination mr Tule told the court that one one michael uh, uh Jardin, was the general manager of gun petroleum in 2010 and he, Michael Jardine, ceased to be managing director after 2016 presidential elections. Tura said, after the 26th presidential election, when Michael Jardine left the Gam Petroleum, the force accused Sehu Drame assumed office as the acting managing director of the company. He is saying that um, Sehu Drame came into being after this Michael Jardine, who was acting a French, uh, was um, um, taken out of the position uh, after 2016 elections, let's say in 2017, uh, Sehu Drame became the acting acting managing director of the uh, of, of of Gun Petroleum. When the defense counsel, uh, lawyer E. Many, asked whether there was any other person before the first accused witness said he did not know. 
he was asked whether there was any other person who acted in the position of managing director before Sheikh Drame. He said he doesn't know. When the defense counsel, lawyer Imani, asked whether there was, oh, sorry, do I, uh, um, lawyer, um, lawyer Mani continue. Do you know when the second accused, uh, uh, accused became the operational manager at Gump Petroleum? Lawyer asked, uh, um, he replied around December 2019. PW, uh, that's the second um, prosecutor witness responded. He said that Mr. Gessama uh, became the, the, the um, director of operations in December 2019. Okay. The, it the witness said Mr. Mohamed Basi Jr. was the operational manager before the appointment of the second accused, Lami Gessama. He continued that, uh, that Mr. Basi Jr. left the gun petroleum before the appointment of the second accused as managing director of the company. He's saying that Mr. Geraldine and Mr. Gin, uh, Basi Jr. have left the company bef uh, bef um, uh, and Sehu Drami took over and, and Gassama took over as the operational director um, after, uh, in 2017. He, um, lawyer many continued to say, is it correct to say that there was no formal handing over between the second accused, Mohamed Basi Jr.? Lawyer many asked. Yes, the witness responded. The witness responded that there was no handing over uh, between lawyer, uh, Mr. Bazi Jr. and and Mr. Gassama. That sounds to be a problem. If if this position stands, he uh, he admitted no, there was no handing over. Um, it, he continued. The lawyer continued to ask: Is it correct that there was? Also, no reconciliation of the physical or actual stock balance with, with the book balance between Mohamed Basi uh, Jr. and the second accused. Lawyer Mendy asked. Yes, the witness responded. The witness agreed again that there was no reconciliation uh, I mean, I mean done or, or, or handing over reconciliation done for, in the books uh, when Mr. Basi left. He agreed on that. You mentioned the name of... O OMC's Petro, Petro, uh, Petrogas Atlas Extra. Do you think they, uh, it is a coincidence that the same names were excluded by the PW1 in this testimony? Good. Good. Now, he has been cross-examined. Now, this is the person acting as the, uh, the director of operations. Now, he's been cross-examined by the defense, and the defense is asking this valid question to say. Now, uh, um, that, that he mentioned the, the oil marketing companies, uh, Petrogas and Atlas. But he asked him, do you think it is a coincidence that the same names were not, uh, were, the same names were excluded uh, um, by PW1 in his testimony, Mr. Keter's testimony? And uh, before the court, uh, lawyer many asked, the witness responded, it is possible, but the names he mentioned are the major oil, uh, oil marketing company. Now, as I said, he said it's possible that he did it deliberately. What does he have to cover? You see how they control the systems? What does he have to cover? What, who he is protecting? Mr. Cater definitely was protecting someone, and this company is protecting. Lawyer many, uh, lawyer many uh, um, um, continue, will it surprise you that PW1 disagreed that these are the major oil companies when, when, when I put it to him? PW2 replied, as far as I know and operations is concerned, those are the major oil, com oil, oil marketing companies. And I don't agree with PW1 because these are the oil major companies, or major oil, oil, oil marketing companies. Definitely that's PW1 was lying. And lawyer many continue. Lawyer many asked the witness whether it is not the case that PW2 was asked to mention those names that were excluded on the uh, under cross-examination of PW1. The witness responded that the names he mentioned are the ones he can remember. Lawyer Mendy asked the witness whether it was not the case that uh, um, him uh, was asked to mention those names that was excluded. No, he said no. This is the ones he can remember. Lawyer Mendy then asked uh, whether all the oil marketing companies have to a throughput agreement with Gump Petroleum, and the witness responded in affirmative, yes. He said, yes, they have uh, uh, this, this thing. He said, do you know why the throughput agreement included, uh, included that of Jar Oil uh, was excluded from the throughput agreement presented to this court? Lawyer Mendy 
I asked. I don't know. The witness responded. You see, another kingpin of Baro is Jawel. And, and again, they're trying to protect Jawel. They do not include Jawel ja, 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 ja into this. This is, this is the country we have. This is the country we have. Why are we not discussing this? Why are we looking for frivolous matters to discuss in our the discourse? This is a multi-million dollars is, uh, issue. Or, or almost a billion. Let's continue. Lawyer many ask whether the relationship between OMV, uh, uh, the o OMCs and Gun Petroleum are based on uh, throughput agreement and the witness responded in the, uh, uh, in the affirmative. The defense counsel asked the witness whether it is not correct that all the international traders have inspectors on the ground and gun petroleum or at the gun petroleum. He said yes, they all have inspectors on the ground, he, the witness have said. Mr. Keta, as I said, was not a reliable witness. Now this person who, who is there with him said he should know. Mr. Keta should know these things. I know these things. I am not working for Gun Petrol because I have interest. But he worked for Gun Petrol as a senior manager of finance. How can he not know? He is part of the cabal. He's put there by the cabal to control the systems. Let's continue. The witness confirmed that the role of the inspector is to inspect the stock and the trade tra traders uh, stock of the traders and ensure that the qu quantity quantity and quality are maintained for each vessel and said the inspectors also make sure that the outturn qual uh, quantity uh, uh, that gun petroleum receive are intact that's why people will have an inspector they have their inspectors on the ground to inspect to make sure the quantity and the quality is delivered. They inspect to make sure the quality uh, is, is discharged from gun petroleum. And now the in, in charge of finance telling us he doesn't know that happened and he works at the depot. Let's continue. Lawyer Many, um, Lawyer Many said between the 4th of January 2021 to 31st October, um, October 20, 2021. Did these traders have their various inspectors on the ground at Gun Petroleum? The witness said yes. They, 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 um, yes, the witness responded. This is the during before. This is immediately. This was immediately before the, um, the scandal. Now, the prosecution failed again. You have to put a case, but now a hole, you left a hole, and these people are pinching on that hole. Now, even if Mr. Mr. Drame and Gassama are, are, are responsible for something, they will not be held accountable because of they deliberately left holes. The reason they left holes because they don't want to hold other people accountable. Now, because of creating that loophole, now the, the defense is just jumping on those loopholes. You have to ascertain. That's why I said you, the, def, the, the prosecution, have to make sure that the entire case is is, is 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 done right due process the stock received the accounting of the stocks and everything was done right it continued he said is it correct that the products the defense asking again is it correct that the products of the variant international traders that were stored in gun petroleum are com uh, comical with one another lawyer many ask yes the products with the same characteristics the witness responded yeah what it means that are they just putting all i mean as we explained earlier different um, different um same different companies products will be put together of obviously of the same characteristic yes that's what happened and lawyer many um lawyer many said is it correct for you uh, for you to know if the products are of the same characteristic. You must know the qu qu um, quality of the product that they are bringing. PW2 said, yes, you must know the quality and specifications of the product. It's common sense. Lawyer Many uh, continue. You told the court about the product of the checklist and the certificate of qu quantity. Are, th are, are they not required to produce certificate of qu uh, uh, qualities? of the product apart from the certificate of quantity yes they are required to produce the certificate of quality the witness responded lawyer many then 
then ask how uh, how products are checked at the gum petroleum and the witness said they check the products by taking samples adding that they check check the products visibly as well okay lawyer many continue to say is it only visible checks by confirming the if the characteristics are the same no, he said no the witness replied no not only visible inspection carried carried out uh, out to check uh, the sediments and, and the uh, particles of the product and also checking the products the witness answered no they do uh, sort of uh, other test not only uh, visible checking lawyer many asked the witness whether it is correct that the da daily dip, uh, dip in that are conducted at gum petroleum is to know the uh, availability space in the tank and to create space before bringing products the, the witness replied, yes, it is meant for that, and the witness confirmed. This is to check the dipping, to probably it's something to put into check to measure the emptiness or what the tank condition of the tank is. That's what they, uh, they, they confirmed it. Um, um, he continued, Lawyer many, con uh, many continue to say, what is the tank capacity of, uh, of gas oil? Lawyer many ask, the total storage capacity of gas oil is 20,000 metric tons. The witness responded. Lawyer Manny um, continued to, what is the total storage capacity for petrol? PW2 to responded, the total storage capacity for pet petrol is 10,000 metric tons. Lawyer Manny continued to ask, what about jet fuel? PW2 said the total storage capacity for jet fuel is 5,000 metric tons. Lawyer Manny continued to ask, what about heavy fuel? PW2, the total storage capacity for heavy, uh, heavy fuel is 15,000 metric tons. Lawyer Manning asks, what's the liquid, uh, uh, liquidated petrol gas? What about liquidated petrol gas? PW2 said the total storage of liquidated, uh, liquidated petrol gas is 1,000 metric tons. Lawyer Manning asked again, why is it necessary to do the daily dip in? Uh, um, he replied, it's, it's to to know the available space in the tank and to help us to know the quality uh, we can receive from the vessels the witness responded. I know where the law is taking this. There's a major hole in the prosecution and the witness is just going through that hole. This is what the um, prosecution should have established, not to leave for the uh, defense to establish. Why did the prosecution did not establish this? There's a witness. They are protecting someone in order to establish that some people have to be brought in to testify. And it will bring clarity. And that clarity would make other people being held responsible. They don't want those people being held responsible. It continued. Loemeni said, is it correct that the, light, the larger the available space the, in the tank, the more you, you can receive uh, you can receive the product from the vessel. Yes, by considering this uh, safety loading area, the witness said. Obviously, the more uh, vacant, push, uh, volume, vacant storage you have, the more you can uh, accept. That's what he said. Lawyer Manny asked the witness whether he could kindly recall the day he received 14,000 metric tons of petrol, uh, petrol fuel at the petroleum, and the witness responded in affirmative yes. This witness seems to be very capable. Lawyer Manny asked, Mr. Toure, can you explain how this was done at Gump Petroleum and how Gump Petroleum was able to receive this when the capacity is 10,000 metric tons? That's what I'm saying. That's where he was going. That's the loophole. <laughs> My God. Prosecution. How can the prosecution win this case? Deliberate. Now, obviously, if the 10,000 metric tons. That's why he was asking capacity. The capacity, how did they manage to take 14,000 metric tons? And Mr. Toure um, explained. When the vessels discharge and refill the empty space in the tank, then the, the discharge will temporarily stop and try to create a space by loading the domestic trucks. And if the Malians are already around, we will load those trucks and well to create more space for the vessels to decide more product to refill the space that have already been created that is how we call, um, call these things yeah makes sense now 
What he is explaining is they have a capacity of 10,000 tons, liters. The vessel might bring 14,000 tons. What they do is they first discharge as much as possible to the tanks and the remaining quantity, uh, a volume and uh, with the vessel, what they do is they use the domestic tank, uh, vehicles like the tanks and especially if the Malians are there, the Malians get about 30 to 40, 40 lorries within. Probably it takes, I don't know how many tons, two tons or ten, three tons or what. And they will use the avail uh, that available space to, to, up, up load, or to load, load, the, um, load the rest of what is left in the vessels. This is how they manage to, to receive uh, the volume uh, bigger than, than their uh, storage uh, space. Lawyer many asked the witness whether the uh, domestic trucks are for oil marketing companies as well as Malians or or and he answered yes they are the uh, they are the witnesses now how can you not bring the domestic um, marketing companies to trial how can you not bring the Malians to trial because they are trying to keep the, some people out now he is saying that um, uh, the guy admitted that yeah, the, the, those trucks are owned by uh, local companies and Malians. The lawyer reminded the witness that he told the court that OMV must submit delivery notes before they up, uplift petrol from gum petroleum and the witness confirmed. Lawyer many continued to say <coughs> again. Lawyer many asked this question. That, or make it the point to the uh, guy that you did tell us that in order in order for companies to take fuel from gum petroleum they have to deliver uh, uh, issue out a delivery note there must be a note that to be seen before they are allowed he said yeah let's continue lawyer many for um, lawyer many continue for gum petroleum to allow a truck to uh, uh, uplift petrol in order to create space to enable you to receive product from the vessel do do the truck go through the process of submitting delivery note in order for them to uplift the witness responded in aff affirmative yes in order for them in fact to create the space do those trucks have to still uh, distinct delivery notes so that they can get the stock direct i mean i mean i mean from so that they can get the stock in order to create space for more stock to be delivered there are many uh, continue where the OMV allowed to uplift products even when they are on negative balance. He said, yes, yes, it does happen. The witness answered. Now, that's it. Now, he's saying that the companies or the OMV, the, 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 the um, oil mark, uh, OMC companies, oil marketing companies are allowed to take fuel after even if they're in with negative stock means that if they don't even have stock in the in the petrol in the tank they can take someone else's stock in, in in agreement that obviously they're going to pay continue lawyer manage um, uh, explain sometimes when you are not not discharging but expecting a vessel you still create a space for the vessels you are expecting pw2 said yes that's where the analysis comes about by anticipating how many products you are receiving yes again he Lamini is establishing this that look even if the there's not a ship docked to discharge but they are anticipating there will be a ship to discharge probably in a week or two or days in, in anticipation they can release stock in order to create space in the tank so that they can uh, get in the this thing to avoid uh, um, shortage of petrol in the country. That's what they say. It continued to say. Many told the witness that he informed the court that the that a, a particular point between first of October, thirtieth October, twenty twenty one, that the uh, the dip in shows zero in the terms of product, and PW two two responded in positive. The time of the crisis between 1st October to 31st October. He, uh, lawyer man is put it to him that you said here that during this period, the, the dip in means the measurement shown zero products. PW2 said yes, that happened. Lawyer many said, is, 
Is it not correct that you were expecting a vessel during that time and the vessel is called empty high discovery? Yes, it is true, the witness responded. Now, why did it go zero? That need to be answered. Again, the, the, the defense has been smart here. But is the prosecution catching this? What did the defense try to establish? Is pointing a hole? Is the, should the prosecution not come in and seal that hole? We'll, 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 we'll check that and subsequently. But what is say, saying that, look, you were anticipating. But the anticipation and the guy who said the analysis should tell them they should not take a risk where the tank will go empty. No, they will create space, but not to make sure the tank goes empty. That's why the shortage happened. What causes that? That's where the prosecution should establish. That the prosecution should have established this thing. If the prosecution have established it, the defense would not have taken it. Now, the defense is exp uh, exploiting this, and in a sense, I know the defense is not going to take a certain bit of this. They're going to move out of there and leave doubt. What the defense is doing here, creating doubt. But the Gambians, our interest should be why the empty tank? Why the empty tank? You see, now, because of why that empty tank have to implicate so many people, the cabal who supported Barrow in his re-election, who continue to support Barrow, sponsoring the media and doing everything else, sponsoring the NPP form campaign and buying vehicles and everything else, they don't want to be held accountable. Now, two people want to be held accountable. It continued. Lawyer many the vessel, uh, the lawyer many said the vessel cancelled at the last minute. PW two. Yes, that's true. Lawyer many continue. Do you know why? PW two said no. I don't know. Lawyer many continue to ask. Now, can you tell us through the procedure of loading trucks by various o o OMCs and Malians at the uh, Gun Petroleum Depot? You see, he created doubt. The defense created doubt and ran away from it. Now leave it. It's for the prosecution to to, to interject there and and, and and put that doubt out. But they will not do that. This would let the uh, trial to collapse. They will not do that because they they would have established that before then the defense. Now the petrol cancel. Who canceled that? You see what I'm saying. The cabal were fighting. Remember what I said when Barrow came to visit that. Uh, petroleum this thing that's when the infighting started that's when the infighting started now Barrow said what they tried to get Gambians to invest to own the to, to own the uh, interest I'll try after this program I'm resting but tomorrow morning I'll, I'll post it again for Gambians so they remember when I was pointing this out that when Barrow visited that place he was at it he was already at it this is where, this is what led to this crime. Barok have to be held accountable. First Lady have to be held accountable. MPP have to be held accountable. Campaign finance and, and, and the, uh, many, many uh, uh, part of the cabal have to be. And do you think Barrow would do that? No, that's why the case is at risk. Let's continue. Lawyer Manit said, do you know why uh, PW2 said no? I don't know. And, and uh, okay, uh, Lawyer Manit continued. Can, can you tell us, um, can you take us through the procedure of loading trucks by the various OMC and Malians uh, um, at the Camp Petroleum Depot? Now, uh, Mr. What is the name? PW, uh, the prosecution witness too, I think it's that, said the whole process starts from control room where, where loading tickets are prepared. When the OMC submit their delivery notes, and the control room at the control room the control room will prepare the loading tickets then the tickets will be sent to to the, the second accused passing which is the stock um director of operations um uh, passing uh, office office his of passing office to it's not personally to him but to his office will be sent to this office the director of operations office to authorize the tickets will then pass to the security gate number three for booking and for their signature on it. Once the safety officer will be inspected, ex inspected the truck before the entrance. Guys, now, 
why all these people were not brought to testify before to explain this uh, thing and if the investigation was done then we can know which corporate how did they get away to take the fuel out and who is responsible in, in that fuel going out the system did not fail the system did not fail people in the system make the system to fail there are mechanisms you see there are mechanisms let's move on we didn't have that much time but once i read it gambians can make up their mind he continued he the gentleman continued the pwq said then the loading master and the depot supervisor will request for the trucks to enter and the trucks will be properly arranged at, at their various loading base the driver of the truck will now hand over the ticket to the loader the loader will go through the ticket to inspect and make sure that the assigned quantity responds with the capacity of the truck the loader load loading master also confirmed the emptiness of the truck before loading them the the witness told the court there's a complete system in place a mechanism is in place to check and balance to make sure everything goes right now how can we not get people responsible for this to come how two people are targeted they do it deliberately so that so that we lose this case they want to lose this case because they don't want to do it right and Gambians would forget about the case. Remember, they have already com compensated the victims or the perceived victims. It continued. The witness continued that the outbound uh, out, out cables would be connected to the bonding arm of the truck, which will be lowered to the, uh, to the compartment of the truck. Um, this is just technical things, you know, not, not very important. He added that the bonding arm must make uh, base contact and then the qu quantity stipulated on the ticket will now be, be, be in, in, in set, um, I mean, in the meter. The driver will, will, will open the fuel valve and, and hold it. The loader will now put on the meter and, and, uh, and start delivery, the product, uh, delivering the product to the truck. After the completion of the delivery, the loader will now reset the meter and the, the quantity delivered will be recorded in a record room uh, and, and printed. The, the driver will move the truck to another place if he is supposed to load another product. So the same procedure applied to the truck, he explained completely. There's a system completely that is accountable. Now, who deliberately missed the system? Lawyer many uh, um, asked, what is, what is the procedure when the trucks are, le left, le are leaving the Gun Petroleum Depot? The, the witness PW2 explained, the loader will now sign a loading ticket and send it to the control room, while the driver will take the truck to the uh, sealed in area and seal, uh, and seal the truck. The control room will prepare the final loading ticket and the seed, uh, seal number will be indicated on the final loading ticket. The ticket now will be sent to reception where they call the driver to come and sign the accept, uh, and accept the final loading ticket, which include the quantity. The ticket will now be sent to the second accused person office, that is the uh, um, operation director of persons office, um, I mean, office of uh, for signature. Uh, and then the first accused person office for signature. You see, this is so stringent. After all that, before even departing, the stock director of um, operations and the managing director will have to sign. Sign. The ticket will now be be. Oh, sorry, their office have to sign, not them. In fact, their office they may have to sign. The ticket will now uh, be re uh, resent to the reception for copies. Uh, copies of the signature the ticket will now be uh, sorry uh, to a copies of uh, copies of the ticket in which uh, GRA get a copy from the reception GRA get a copy from the reception for tax purposes once the product leave this thing will be liable for tax you see they don't they don't even want to get to that because the tax another area of corruption is the tax GRA, the other area of the, uh, this thing is tax, and they don't want to get to that corruption as well. They don't want to get to that corruption as well. Um, the driver also will get, get his own copy. It's done right. 
that everything should be going right. There's no problem with the system or the mechanism. It's the people themselves. Then the auditing can be done. If you have the system auditing, who is responsible, who did not do their job, who, or, or who did something wrong, can be fine. Why did they not do a forensic auditing then? Lawyer many, on this base, base of this copy, lawyer many asks, on the base of this, this the, the copy, are customs copy, uh, copy computed on every truck uh, that leave the gun petrol? The witness responded, yes, they are computed. That's GRA, customs. Lawyer many continue, do customs, GRA, provide escorts for the trucks? PW2 said, yes, they provide escort for the trucks up to the border to make sure that the petrol is not going to be sold in the Gambia. Petrol sold in the Gambia will be liable to tax. But this one will be going to the border and, 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 and to Senegal and go through Mali. Yeah. Lawyer many ask, between the 1st of January to 31st October, did you follow this procedure that you explained to the court? PW2 answered, yes, these are the procedures we always follow against petroleum. You see, this is what I'm saying. Now, how can you accuse this two for stealing the petrol and this mechanism is in place and this mecha mechanism should work and this mechanism was working who then stole the petrol unless you bring everybody on board these two will not be held accountable that's my point this is why the lawyer is the defense lawyer is going through this base this is why the prosecution should have established this base to uh, but if the prosecution has established this base they would have got more people to come to the trials to be charged. He continued. Yes, these are the procedures we always followed at Gun Petroleum. Lawyer man, was it the same procedure happening at Gun Petroleum before the first and second accused of, uh, uh, officers? PwC said yes, as far as I know. You see, this is just, 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 just scattered this case. And this is the witness for the prosecution. This is not even the defense witness. But this witness is so good for the defense, it's like the defense produced this witness. But he's just been factual. <laughs> we have to be serious. Uh, lawyer many uh, said, is it, is, it, is it only the two accused that authorized a ticket? PW said, no, we have other author uh, authorized signatures. Voila. Now why bring on only two? We have other authorized signatures. Why just be on the two? Now, if this is serious, the government don't want to prosecute this case. They want this prosecution to fail so that the case will be forgotten because of Barrow to Down are involved. The cabal run that country. We continue. PW2. Um, a lawyer Mendy said, is it signature to buy junior officers first before it reached to the first and second accused? PwC said, yes, they are normally signed, uh, they normally sign them on behalf of first and two at the control room. This means that earlier the ticket is authorized on their behalf or the final ticket will also be signed on their behalf. Lawyer, lawyer Mendy asks again. Will the control room have a record of all the tickets they have issued between the 1st of January and the 1st of October? Uh, PWC says, yes, they should have all the records. I established that that should happen. Now, why we have a problem with this investigation? It's deliberate. Why did they not do a forensic auditing and get everybody involved? And so that the system would be clear, clear clean. He said, look, there's no only one person can do this. Two people cannot do this. There should be a complicit mechanism in place, a protocol in place. There's a system in place. Then the lawyer asked the number of personnel at the control room. P PW2 said there were ab ab almost five. Lawyer many said, uh, asked again, these people were they gun petroleum, uh, were they at gun petroleum between the 4th of January and 31st of October 2021? P PW2 said, I cannot remember, but four of them were there between, between that period. But I cannot remember if, uh, I cannot remember when the last person joined them there. That's good enough. Even two people been there, it was good enough. He continued again. In addition, lawyer many asked how many personnel are at the loading bay. And Pete W2 said there are almost 12 uh, loaders at the loading depot. 
Now, let me ask again, these 12 people, were they all there between the 1st of January and 31st of October 2021? PW2 said yes, they were there between that period. This is the period that, that leading to the missing stop. But what I'm saying is, the defense would not touch on that, on the missing stop, how, what caused the missing. But they would go around and now put a hole in, in everything the, the prosecution have put out. If he continued, lawyer many, <laughs> in addition, lawyer many, uh, many ask how many personnel, okay, uh, the defense lawyer further inquired the number of personnel at the reception, and the witness said there are three people before, but not, uh, only two people are there presently. Many further quiz, if the number of personnel at the receptions were three or two between 1st of, of January to 31st of October 2021, and PW2 said yes, they were three at that time. The lawyer also asked where the uh, Gun Petroleum has custom posts as well, apart from the people at the reception and the security posts, and the witness responded in positive. They have even have custom posts. Mind the, the, the check and balance is, is just so much. Yes, lawyer many now um I'm asked um now the throughput charge and fees are calculated on the basis of the um oil uh, marketing companies. Yes, that is true. The witness said. Lawyer many continue to ask the true throughput um, uh, agreement between Gun Petroleum and OMC has dictated accounts accounts to which OMC uh, OMC pay the throughput charges and fees. That's beyond my level, he replied. So I don't know the, uh, the witness replied. The witness reply he doesn't know is beyond his level. But the a manager, uh, accounts manager should have known. And, and, and this is where the problems are. Lawyer many continue. Would you agree with me that there is uh, that is done at the finance department? PWT said, yes, I agree with you. As I said, it was not should be at the finance department. Lawyer many continue to say, is it correct that the more lifting of product, the more money gun petroleum raised? PWT said, yes, that is possible. It's not about possible, that's the reality. The more lifting you do, the no more you pay. You see, that's why Mr. Keta was economical with the truth. He is part of the cabal. All these people should have been charged. All these people should be removed from that place. But if you have to remove these people, Baro has to be removed because he's a, the head of the snake. And this now person who was a trade, people who are saying, oh, the trade minister is good, he was in charge of, of this inquiry. And he, and he do, did this dodgy job. And now he is rewarded to be finance minister. You think he's going to be different from Mambure Njai? Unless you are prejudiced on Mambure Njai, the same uh, uh, um, uh, um, accountability should be put on this guy. Keta. Many said that the finance department must have recorded the uh, the to the two um, the uh, two put uh, two put charge and fees between first of January thirty first of December, and the witness said yes. Continue. It is going to be interesting to see the defense witness and see the cross examination from the prosecution. I am going to follow this case. Let's continue. The, a lawyer many said the the true uh, the throughput charge and fees would have been computed for that period by, by the finance finance this thing. P, P, uh, PW2 said yes, it's supposed to be computed. Lawyer many then asked the witness whether the first accused and the second accused were personally involved in the loading of the truck, uh, but the witness responded in negative and added, "We we have loaders who assigned." to load the trucks. The defense is doing a good case here. He said that, look, my, my client, the two accused, uh, the former managing director of, director of operations, don't have a responsibility to that. They, other people are responsible for it. That's why those people have been brought in. If the stock have to leave that place, all these people have to know. That's what he's trying to establish here. We continue. Lawyer many, Continue. You told the court that there there are OMCs who are allowed to uplift per product when even when they are there there are no negative uh, there are they they are on negative balance. Is that 
practical been but practically been happening before the first and second accused assume office pw2 says this is practical this practically was happening now he is establishing that this practice was not something introduced by Shehu and the is it Gassama, the the second accused this predated them it was happening before it was happening before they did not introduce this that's what he's trying to establish now is it correct that first and second accused continue with the system they found a gun petroleum as the lawyer the witness said yes that's true the uh, witness responded lawyer many continue how often does the gun petroleum clean the tanks pwt said every five years for diesel and petrol for jet fuel we clean it every two years lawyer many what did you do with the tank during cleaning PWT, we remove non-liquid -li material from the tank. Layer many. This non-liquid material are accumulated uh, uh, residue from the fuel stored in the tank. PWT, yes, they are, um, that is true, and they are found at the bottom of the tank. Layer many. They came from a material uh, material place of a tank over a long period. PWT. Yes, that is why we always clean the tank every five years and in, in it can affect our measuring. They create space for other products. There are many. Apart from the non-liquid material, if you have water, it, it could all also affect your measurement, PW2 answered yes. Now, the defense is establishing here. There are reasons that might affect the measurements, but saying that but the cleaning a cleaning is done routinely within this period of time to avoid this problem happening, but and and because of content water content might affect the measurement or material deposits from the residue of petrol might might affect the content of of oil, then the margin of this thing should not be much when cleaning regular cleaning is done. He continued to say. When was the last time you did tank cleaning at Gun Petroleum? Lawyer Mendy asked. Uh, we did it November 2021. The witness answered. Um, um, responding to Lawyer many question on how much non-liquid material have, uh, have done, uh, ha have uh, Gun Petroleum removed from the uh, gas oil and, and gas gasoline tanks during their last cleaning. PW2 said they removed almost 2,000 2,000 metric tons for the gas oil tank and 1,000 metric tons for the uh, for the gasoline tanks. Gas oil tanks and gasoline tanks. Lawyer Manny uh, then said, at the loading bay, uh, um, at the loading bay, do you check meter reading every day? P PW2 said yes. Lawyer Manny continued, between 1st uh, January to 31st, uh, 31st October, um, from the daily meter reading you can you can have the records of up, uplift of fuel and dump petroleum pwt said yes including the quantity of, of load lawyer many do you have the total uplift uh, between 1st january 31st october 2021 pwt said yes the control room will have it lawyer many is it correct that between the period the second accused was mostly out of the jurisdiction? PWT said yes, he is on leave of absence without pay. Okay, he's establishing that there's a period that the second accused, the director of stock, uh, director of operations, uh, have been away from the country for certain reasons. Um, yes, that's establishing his absence now. Where many continue? During the second accused absence, were you sending him the, the daily uh, dip, uh, dip in regular, uh, regularly? PwC said, no, I was not. He was not in the loop. Lawyer Manny, do you told this court that the second accused person was appointed in 2019 as operational manager? Please, could you tell this court what he asked, uh, what he asked you to do? PW2 re replied, he asked me to do dip in of all the storage tanks and verify all physical stock uh, physical stock in, in the tanks I mean this is a question we pose of 
what happened when this guy took over the position what did he ask his assistant to do and this assistant answered that he was asked to do this regularly uh, to check the tanks and and, uh, and verify the physical talk stop lawyer many have you done that P uh, the pw2 said yes lawyer many did you discover anything pw2 said yes he told me that he wanted to compare the books stock and the physical talk stop lawyer many did you compare them PW2, yes, he did, and I later realized that there was a huge difference between the book stock and the physical stock. This is explosive. They are saying that there was a discrepancy before, well before the period of the problem. This is what they say. Now, this is what the defense is trying to establish. Now, the prosecution, if they have established this, the defense will not have touched it. The defense would have tried to uh, cross-examine that. Now, in fact, the defense is doing a better job by establishing this. Whether it's going to stand or not, it depends on the prosecution to come and debunk this. If they leave this to stand, I don't see how these people can be held responsible. Let's continue. Now, Lyamani, can you recall back PW2? Gasoline was, was more and the defense was around eight to 9,000 metric tons. Yeah, he continued, lawyer many, uh, lawyer many I, uh, are you referring to the difference? PW2 said, yes, I am referring to the difference, and the gasoline was about 5,000 uh, 5, metric tons. Lawyer many, again, there is a difference between the open stock and the closed stock. Do you have record for this stock? Yes, the witness replied. What is the open, uh, open physical stock balance from the 1st of October 2021? And the closing stock balance for gas oil. Lawyer Mendy asked the witness. For gas oil, the witness said for gasoline, it it was ten million and five thousand four hundred and sixty-eight liters for gasoline. For for uh, for gasoline. For gasoline, it was four million uh, <laughs> for gas oil, that was gas oil now for gasoline. For gasoline, it was 4,239,749 liters, the witness told the court. Lawyer Manny, what is the closing stock for October and November gasoline was zero, the witness responded. Now, let's decide on this. Now, why, why, would, the, why would the defense pull this out but the prosecution never uh, make this case the defense must be conf confident of not having liability and they try to establish that liability was not them but someone else and who is this someone else that's why we said that this case is not been prosecuted right let's move on it is not is it is is it not correct that the difference is 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 the total uplift for the uh, particular uh, OMC uh, for that month? The witness responded in af uh, affirmative. The difference uplift for OMCs. Why not OMC is not on the block? Oil marketing companies, uh, Babaka uh, Babaka Jawara and others. And I have to try this one finally. It's going to two, almost two and a half hours. Um, this one is um, defense lawyers in the petroleum corps and scandal have cross examined that witness at the high court. This is the third witness. Okay. Uh, Alu Jalo, register company, uh, regist registers of company at the Att Attorney General and Minister of Justice testify in the petroleum corps and scandal trial at the third witness. Three. Uh, on the 19th of May 2022 in the trial involving two staff of the facility. Shortly after completing testimony, Mr. Jalo told the court during course examination that Gun Petroleum is a private company and not a public company. Mm. It's not owned by government. It's owned by shareholders. That's what it meant. Okay. Let's see why, why this is important. Okay. Uh, lawyer Manny, uh, Mr. Jalo, are you, are you a lawyer? The witness responded in affirmative, yes. Lawyer Manny, you know the difference between private company and the public uh, companies as statutory. Um, they, they are not the same. PW3, yes, 
I know the difference uh, to, to some extent. Some extent. I think you, as a lawyer, you should know, especially at the company register, you should know our, our distinct. There are two distinct things. It's public and private. Okay, uh, owned by shareholders and not owned by public. Lawyer many uh, said, Mr. Diallo, I am sure you are in the Gambia before 2014. Yeah, uh, PWT, yes, I've been here before 2014. Lawyer many said, it's general knowledge. You are aware that gun petroleum have been existence in the Gambia before 2014. PWT said, I don't know. He said he doesn't know. PW, um, PW2, Lamin Toure told the court that he has been working in gun petroleum uh, uh, since 2010. Does that surprise you? Lawyer many asked. I would not be surprised because I was not privy to that. The witness responded. Lawyer many continued. Then asked the witness whether before 2013 Company Act was passed into law, whether it is correct that companies were incorporated in the 19, 1955 Act. The business response uh, responded. Uh, the, 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 the witness responded in positive. Okay. I continue to say. Um, continue to say uh, with the Company Act of 2013, these companies that were under the 1955 Company Act were asked to march from the old-fashioned uh, analog to the digital platform. Lawyer many put it to the witness, and the witness confirmed. Lawyer many then put it to the witness that most of those companies are re-registered under the Company Act 2020. 20, as part of the reforms that was introduced with the witness confirmed too. Lawyer many asked the witness if he could be surprised that gun petroleum existed before 2013 and he responded in the positive. Many then put it to the witness that the original shareholders of gun petroleum in 2019 are, are there about was Mohamed Basi and Ahmad Samba when it was originally incorporated. And yeah, we know Amal Sama was keeping the idea <laughs> Yeah, and um, yes, he called, he said, he, um, you told this court that upon incorporation, 17 April 2014, that the company is required to fill annual reports, uh, returns after 12 months from the date of incorporation, lawyer many at PW3, uh, and he confirmed. Interested, and then lawyer many informed the witness that 12 months from 17 April 2014 uh, will will be 17 uh, April 2015, and the PW, uh, PWC agreed. Then lawyer many asked, and 12 months after that would the annual uh, anniversary of 2016, and so so and so forth. PW3 said yes. The witness responded. He is establishing a point here. And all these points should have been established in the investigations and make sure they bring their case in order. But this case is not brought in order. Let's see what he's going to establish. The case is cases are going to choose the, the appearance of testimony. Um, yeah. The cases are going to. Then we have the staff. Okay. Uh, the, the, the. Now we have P, 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 w, uh, PW4, the fourth witness. Um, the control, uh, that's the control supervisor at Gun Petroleum, Usman Emba, on Monday testified uh, as fourth prosecution witness in the landmark Gun Petroleum trial at High Court in Banjoon. The case involved the trial of former managing director, we know of. The duo uh, have been slapped over eight counts, we know that. The witness who is fourth prosecution witness in this case took the uh, court through a brief rundown of gun petroleum procedures, uh, process and procedures of operation under the guidelines of State Council Malu. Uh, Mr. Bach told the court that once they received trucks, they would co consult the first and second accused or, or any person delegated by them. If they agree for the truck to be loaded, then, then loading will co commence. If the, if they, if the, okay, if they, okay, uh, if the okay is given to, to load, then we, we we give a load verification ticket. 
this is where you have the truck details like the number plate and and each compartment and capacity of each compartment this this loading ticket carries the delivery note which indicates the vehicle's number the driver's name and the quantity the um, the witness told the court excellent again the process the mechanisms are there procedures protocols details every systems work should work there's no uh, doubt about that now the witness explained that they used the delivery note to prepare the uh, verification tickets. These verification tickets help to know um, to know the volume of products fuel that can be loaded in particular compartment. When this is done, the verification tickets and delivery notes are extended to the first and second accused or any person delegated the I mean I mean uh, delegated on their duty to confirm their on their behalf. The witness ad um, adopted. After ev uh, everything is confirmed, the witness said the loading ticket is then handed over to the security personnel on duty who would also have a confirmation and a signature before letting the truck into the depot. When the truck is, is going for loading, the security personnel on duty would hand over the, the loading certificate uh, verification ticket to the driver who would hand it over to the loader. Then the loader will load the truck according to load certific uh, certification ticket. The witness articulated before court that there is a ticket printing at the control room after every load uh, loading up uh, loading operations operation and that the amount delivered would be delivered to the control room delivered to the control room he further told the court that after each transaction the control room normally prepare a final loading ticket which normally contain the company client name the amount delivered and the first and second accused uh, accused name he added this ticket would later uh, be handed over to the driver to confirm and sign upon satisfaction the loading tickets together with the driver's note is now sent to the first and second accused person or any person delegated by them to sign after which the loading ticket would be generated in control room to photocopy it and the driver would be given a copy which the depot, uh, the, the depot maintain, maintain the original then the driver would be allowed to leave at this juncture the council barlow asked mr ba asked to whether the control room had any other job apart from what he related uh, to to the court. Again, Barlow just um, um, reiterated what this um, second uh, second witness just explained. The procedures are right; they are there. The mechanism, everything. Now, why do you have a problem? People responsible. The witness um, witness is responded. Uh, the, the, the witness in response. Told the court that they did also send a daily truck lift report after conclusion of daily loading transaction which which is the transaction summary of the day some loading tickets of october 2021 were placed before the witness who confirmed this document the documents were exhibited and tendered uh to um to, to this thing now now this is the cross examination of this witness Lawyer Christopher E. Many cross-examined the depot supervisor of John Petroleum in the ongoing economic crime case involving the former general manager and the operational manager of Gun Petroleum Storage uh, uh, GP. Lamin Torres said he, he is the depot manager and currently the acting operations manager of GP. The accused person asked Shehu Dramin that, that we have that during the uh, conservation of Ture said, uh, no, I, I, I've dealt with this before. Uh, I dealt with this one. Yeah, I dealt with this one. Yeah, guys. Um, yeah, and um, I think I've covered so far what I have can access on this trial, and um, yeah, I, I have um accessed this, and um, let me just make sure I'm going to my cut up. Okay, I think I've exhausted um the 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 the. the the, the the what's been delivered but i will try and continue this case i will give it a time and compile the the proceedings and i'll go through it but again this is what we should have been discussing not fibrous issues about nonsense this is that's why i say we have to be careful with some of this platform or some of these individuals they are paid to keep us distracted we have very important issues Tribe is not our problem. 
if these people raise it, it's an issue to distract us. Let's hold these criminals. It's a cabal. They are fullers in it. They are manikers in it. They are wolves. They are every tribe in it. They are every religion in it. And major, major is Muslims who are in it because we are the majority. Let's accept the facts. It's a system. The corruption is a system. And Barra would not stop this. And you see, the, the finance minister is implicated in this. He was the trade minister. He, 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 he was the head of the tax force. And the corruption, they are sealing all these people. All these people that supported them. Thank you very much, guys. It's been a long one. I didn't want it to be a long one. Sorry, guys, I did not read um, uh, There's a lot of comments. I didn't have time to read the comments. I was going to, uh, to, to get this. Thank you, guys. Um, okay, we'll, we'll try and come back uh, after some, before the prosecution close their case. Then when, when the defense come in, we do that. And we see what's come out of it. All we do is to put the spotlight and hope to put Gambian interest in this. And, and to hold them accountable. Thank you very much, guys. Have a good afternoon. Thank you.